but there's no shortcuts. Like you're going to have to make a commitment. Like if you're ready to make a commitment, uh, the kind of commitment where you devote your whole life to playing guitar. And that's it, man. I look like, look like. You have to make up your mind someday. I'm going to spend the rest of my life learning how to play this instrument. And, it, and, and it's a commitment. I'm going to devote myself to it all the time. You know, like if you're married, you devote a certain time to your wife and kids and everything. But 80% of your time is going to be on the guitar. <laughs> Let's face it, that's the way it's it is. True. It's a lifetime commitment, and it takes a whole lifetime to learn how to do it. And even then, there still ain't enough time. You know, I was talking to Rabbi Shankar, he says, man, I've got so many things I want to do that a lifetime isn't long enough to do it. So in other words, that's how hard it is. I mean, it's not like you go to school a week and come back and do it all. I mean, you've got to devote your whole life to it. And if you've got a good teacher, like maybe you can learn in two years what, what you've learned in ten years at the wrong place. So by having a good teacher, you can take shortcuts. But you've got to have the time, and you've got to devote your time, and you've got to say, this is it. And you've got to love it enough. Like, if you don't love it enough, don't do it, because, because, because it takes up, like, too much time. But it has to satisfy you. You know, like, look, look like, spiritually speaking, if the guitar makes you feel really good, and it makes you feel happy, that's what life is all about. Like, look, look like happiness and, you know, spiritualism and everything. So if it makes you happy... Like, you don't mind saying, I'm going to devote my whole life to the guitar. But if you're in it, and you're saying, wow, I want to play guitar, and I want to be great, and I want to make money, but if it's going to take 15 years, wow, that's a long time. Never mind about that, man. If you really like it, it doesn't matter how long it takes. I mean, it's going to take a lifetime anyway. So, so like, if you love it enough, just say to yourself, that's it. Man, I'm a guitar player. I'm going to devote all my life to it. And if, and if the money happens, beautiful. But even if it doesn't happen, you are still like really truthful to yourself, and and that's what makes you happy. Like I, like, you know, like you know, like I'm just starting to make money, and, and I've been playing guitar for 30 years, and I'm just starting to make a decent living. You know, I used to work jobs for 20 dollars, 50 dollars a night. Sometimes I wouldn't even see it, but I was devoted to this practicing. I, you know, I was happy, so it's starting to pay off. But. But the, but the whole thing is, if you're going to make a record and you're going to be a serious guitarist, you want to be mature. Like, you want to wait uh, till your style is mature before you try and sell it. Because otherwise, you can get out there and try and sell yourself, and if you're not really ready, you come off looking like, uh, oh yeah, this guy's been playing two years, and he sounds pretty good, but he ain't mature yet. So his work ain't, a lot of look like, ain't going to be worth as much as somebody that's been playing for 35 years, and he's really got his shit together. You know, like if I was going to buy a Renoir painting, like then that would really be something because I knew the guy worked 60 years at painting. I know his work is done. But if I see a new painter who is like uh, like 14 years old and he's been painting for one year and he's pretty good and he wants to sell me the painting, I'm going to say, it's great, man, and everything, but like, uh, sorry, man, but uh, like you're just not ready. You know, uh, I mean, I want, you know, like I want to buy something that was worked at a long time, somebody that spent their whole life playing, then you've got something to really inspire you. So it's no easy thing, you know, it ain't like a money thing where you're going to make all kinds of money. Uh, you know, like you have to love it enough, I think. Like you have to love it to the point where it means everything to you. Like, you know, like you have to be uh, uh, like, like, like obsessed by the music, but not only obsessed by the music, but, but you have to be like, like, uh, like, uh, there's another word, like, like, uh, it's possession. You have to be, like, possessed by the music, too. <laughs> like, the music has to own you to the point where it's got you by the balls. And you say, man, I have to play. I have to play. Because it's got me. I have to play. It's like John Coltrane used to play so much that when he'd come off the bandstand sometimes, his lips were bleeding. And he'd go into the dressing room and still practice. Practice, practice, practice. He'd come down and be blood running down. Now, that's serious. <laughs> that cat is devoted, you know, to playing music, right? So, uh, so like, there ain't a whole lot of people like that, but I'm saying if you've got very high ideals and you want to play, like, like, really heavy stuff and you've got music you want to play in 20 years from now, you're going to have to put in the time. And, and you may have to go through hard times doing it. Like, maybe, like, you know, like, look like maybe you can start a little business and not do what I did, just, just float around and practice all the time, but... But you have a business, like you have a little music school, you teach, or something, you have a music store, you teach, you make your living that way, and the rest of the time you practice, or you teach, 
And sooner or later, like, look like you have to make up your mind, like, whether it's really worth it to you or not. I mean, is it worth it for me to spend my whole life playing music? I mean, I mean, is it going to pay off? But if you love it enough, like, it looks like you don't mind doing it because the spiritual aspect makes you feel so good that you can go home at night and even though you haven't made a lot of money, you, I mean, like, you feel, like, so good inside and you feel close to God. And you say, like, thank you, God, man, I feel so good. Because I played something today that I never played before and it's something new and I'm really happy about it. That's what music is all about. It's, it, it's supposed to enrich your soul. Like, you know, you know, like if it depresses you, why be a musician if you're always depressed and saying, oh, what a drag, man, I gotta play tonight. But if it makes you feel good and it enriches the soul, then music is doing something for you, like you're meant to be a musician. So, like, I try to be, like, really out front you know, with, you know, with people and say, like, if it really means a lot to you, I have, you know, by all means, like, look like, look like, devote your whole life to it, because there's nothing more satisfying than real good music. And it look like, it look like, for the musician, that that's really serious, it's the fastest route and the fastest way to God. You know, you know, look like, guys like us, like, man, look like, when I'm playing my music, you know, when I'm doing stuff like... me feel close to God like I don't have to go to church and kneel down and say praise the Lord because this is my way of praising like this is a gift from God so when I play I'm I'm playing for the people but I am playing for God because he gave me this gift so I go home and I feel like you know like complete because I played for God and that's the best I can do and so like so like when you're in it that way that means you're in music as a religion and you're not in it because you're going to make a million dollars uh, because you've had a rock and roll record or something. Because you're in it because you love it. Right? So if you're in it like that, like, you don't mind taking five or ten years and learning this and learning that because you know eventually that you're going to get this shit down and eventually, like, it'll lead to a place where you can express yourself. You can say, oh, now I can do this because ten years later I got the chops to do it and this is my tune and blah, 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 and you make a record and that's it. But it takes a long time to develop a personal style. It's like you got to learn, learn like, look like what other cats have done, and then use their tools, and then use it in your own way. So it takes years. You know, like I've been playing for 25 years, and I feel like I'm just starting to develop my own style. You know, because I copied Bill Evans for years, I copied this guy for years, this guy for years. But now I'm starting to play stuff that's, hey, I think that's mine, man. I don't think I ever played that before. So the reward is a long time coming, like, what, like 20 years later. And it would have probably came a lot sooner if I hadn't gotten messed up with drugs. But, but drugs, like, took me away, and it messed up a whole 10 years of my life that I could have been really down there wish shedding, but the drugs messed me up. So I wasted 10 years. So my advice is stay away from all that bullshit. Get right into the music, and let the music get you high. Like, don't worry about getting high and playing, because that ain't going to help you. It's just a big mess, you know. So that's, I mean, it like, look like that's getting down to the philosophy of music. You know what? You know, like what I've been talking about. Like, like that's how I feel about life and music and philosophy and God. You know, I feel I was put on this earth to play this guitar, and I'm going to go down playing it, man. Like I don't care if I become a millionaire or not, but I'll probably die with this mother in my hands. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the way it has to be because I love it so much and it's all I know how to do. Man, if I had to change the light bulb, I'd be dead. You know, like say, hey, let me change that light bulb. I wouldn't know what to do. But I know how to do this, you know? <laughs> hey, man. Do you, yeah. do you play bebop? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I started out playing bebop. Uh, bebop was my first kind of jazz I ever played. I'm just going to take a couple of minutes and light a cigarette, and then I'll play one. All right. Should we take a little break? For sure, a little break would be wonderful.